Jellyfish fascinate and intrigue people around the world. Their existence carries an air of intrigue, magic and mystery, and there are thousands of species of jellyfish worldwide. Here in the UK, we have some interesting species of jellyfish gliding gracefully through our waters. Let's take a look at three jellyfish species that you can find in the UK. To begin, let's meet the elegant and mysterious compass jellyfish. Compass jellyfish have translucent, saucer-shaped bells that can grow up to 30 centimetres in diameter. They have long, delicate tentacles that can reach lengths of over a metre. One fascinating aspect of the compass jellyfish is its ability to regenerate lost body parts. If a part of their bell or tentacles is damaged or severed, they can regrow it, allowing them to recover from injuries and continue their life cycle effectively. Compass jellyfish sometimes have small crustaceans, such as the hyperid amphipod Hyperia galba, living as commensals within their bell. These tiny creatures are not harmful to the jellyfish and benefit from the shelter and protection provided by their host. These mesmerising creatures are typically found in shallow coastal waters and estuaries during the summer months. They drift with the currents, using their tentacles to capture prey, mainly small fish and plankton. Compass jellyfish exhibit a unique form of social behaviour called eusociality, which is quite rare among jellyfish. In certain situations, they form large aggregations known as blooms or smacks, where individuals live together in close proximity and cooperate in various ways. Large blooms of compass jellyfish can have significant ecological impacts. When they gather in massive numbers, they can outcompete other species for food resources and alter the composition of planktonic communities, influencing the entire marine food web in their ecosystem. While the sting of the compass jellyfish is not usually harmful to humans, it's always best to admire them from a safe distance. If you encounter one, keep a respectful distance and notify a lifeguard if you spot them near popular swimming areas. Like other jellyfish species, the compass jellyfish possesses specialised cells called nematocysts, located on their tentacles. These nematocysts contain tiny, harpoon-like structures that inject venom into their prey or potential threats. When a human comes into contact with the jellyfish's tentacles, the nematocyst may release venom. The effect on humans can vary, but it often results in a rash-like appearance on the skin, along with localised pain and itching. While the compass jellyfish sting is typically considered mild, some individuals may experience more severe reactions due to hypersensitivity or allergic reactions to the venom. If stung by a compass jellyfish, it's essential to take appropriate measures to alleviate the discomfort. Rinse the affected area with seawater. Avoid fresh water as it can trigger additional nematocyst discharge. And carefully remove any tentacle fragments if present. Do not use vinegar as it may worsen the sting. Applying a cold compress or using over-the-counter topical treatments for stings can help relieve pain and itching. But always make sure that you seek proper medical attention. Compass jellyfish have an extremely unusual reproductive strategy called alternation of generations. They go through asexual and sexual phases, which allows them to produce both larvae and mature medusae, aka mature jellyfish. Let's take a closer look at the steps involved in this process. The first stage is the asexual reproduction or polyp stage. The life cycle of the compass jellyfish begins with this asexual stage. After mating, the female jellyfish releases fertilised eggs into the water. These eggs may develop into small larval forms known as planulae. The planulae then settle on a suitable substrate, such as rocks or other hard surfaces on the ocean floor. Once attached, the planulae metamorphose into polyps. These polyps are tiny, cylindrical and sessile organisms that resemble miniature sea anemones. 
During the polyp stage, they reproduce asexually through a process called budding. The polyps create genetically identical clones of themselves, forming stacks of connected individuals, also known as strobila. The next stage in the process is known as ephora release. After a period of asexual reproduction, the polyps undergo a significant transformation. Stacks of polyps known as strobila elongate and develop structures called ephora buds on their upper ends. Ephyrae are immature jellyfish that have not yet fully developed their characteristic bells and tentacles. Next, they undergo ephora transformation. The ephyrae continue to grow and mature within the polyps until they are ready to be released into the water. Eventually, the ephyrae are released from the polyps, becoming free-swimming and independent organisms. This process is akin to the budding process in asexual reproduction, but the resulting offspring are not genetically identical to the parent polyp. Once they become independent, they enter the medusa stage, aka the mature jellyfish stage. Once released into the water, the ephyrae continue to develop and grow, eventually reaching their recognisable jellyfish form, the medusa. As the medusae mature, they develop their characteristic translucent saucer-shaped bells and long, delicate tentacles. With the development of mature medusae, the compass jellyfish enters the sexual reproduction phase of its life cycle. Adult jellyfish, now capable of sexual reproduction, release eggs and sperm into the water during spawning events. Fertilisation occurs externally when the sperm encounter the eggs, resulting in the formation of fertilised zygotes. Finally, the fertilised eggs develop into tiny, free-swimming larvae called planulae, thus completing the cycle. The planulae eventually settle on a suitable substrate to begin the process anew, starting as polyps and continuing the alternation of generations. The diet of the compass jellyfish mainly consists of zooplankton, small fish larvae and other tiny marine organisms. They use their long stinging tentacles to capture their prey. The tentacles are covered in specialised cells called nomatocysts, which contain harpoon-like structures that inject venom into their prey, immobilising and subduing them. Compass jellyfish are passive drifters, meaning they rely on ocean currents to move through the water. Their bell-like umbrella-shaped body is used to pulsate, allowing them to gently propel themselves forward. As they drift through the water, their tentacles trail behind them, actively capturing plankton and other small organisms that come into contact with them. When a prey item comes into contact with the tentacles, the nematocysts are triggered, releasing venom and immobilising the prey. The tentacles then draw the captured prey towards the jellyfish's mouth, located in the centre of the bell. Once near the mouth, the compass jellyfish uses its oral arms to help guide the captured prey into its digestive cavity. Compass jellyfish are commonly found in coastal waters and estuaries, particularly during the summer months when their populations peak. They prefer shallow, nutrient-rich waters as these areas typically harbour a higher concentration of plankton and small marine organisms for them to feed on. While compass jellyfish primarily feed on zooplankton and small marine organisms, they have been observed preying on other jellyfish. In terms of location, you can spot these graceful creatures in the coastal waters of the UK, especially in areas such as Cornwall, the Isle of Man and Scotland, and they are most active during the summer months. Let's move on and take a look at the enchanting moon jellyfish. These stunning creatures are some of the most common and recognisable jellyfish species. The moon jellyfish has a delicate translucent bell that can measure up to 40 centimetres in diameter. The moon jellyfish has a relatively simple anatomy compared to other jellyfish species. It lacks a central nervous system, a heart or specialised respiratory organs. Instead, it relies on passive diffusion to obtain oxygen and nutrients from the surrounding water. 
Despite their simplistic anatomy, moon jellyfish have an astounding ability to age in reverse under certain conditions. When faced with environmental stress or food scarcity, adult moon jellyfish can revert to their earlier polyp stage and start their life cycle again. This process, known as transdifferentiation, allows them to potentially achieve biological immortality. Just like the compass jellyfish, moon jellyfish are passive drifters, primarily at the mercy of ocean currents. They pulsate their bell-like umbrellas to gently propel themselves. Moon jellyfish have a fascinating relationship with a type of algae called zooxanthellae. These algae live symbiotically within the jellyfish's tissues, benefiting from the jellyfish's movement, which helps them access sunlight. In return, the algae provide the jellyfish with additional nutrients obtained through photosynthesis. As well as benefiting from the nutrients of zooxanthellae, moon jellyfish primarily feed on zooplankton, including tiny crustaceans, larval fish and various small marine invertebrates. Just like compass jellyfish, moon jellyfish also possess the same simple feeding mechanism thanks to the specialised cells called nomatocysts located on their tentacles. However, the tentacles of the moon jellyfish are also covered with numerous tiny stinging cells called nidocytes, which contain the nematocysts. The stinging cells inject venom into the prey, paralysing or killing it. The tentacles then draw the captured prey towards the jellyfish's mouth located in the centre of the bell. Moon jellyfish are commonly found in temperate and tropical coastal waters around the world, including the United Kingdom. They prefer shallow, calm waters such as bays, estuaries and harbours, where there is an abundance of planktonic food sources. Moon jellyfish play a crucial role in marine ecosystems as both predator and prey. As predators, they help control the populations of plankton and other small marine organisms, contributing to the balance of the food web. Additionally, they serve as a significant food source for various marine animals, including sea turtles, certain fish species and seabirds. In the UK, moon jellyfish are more prevalent during the warmer months, typically from spring to autumn. During this period, their populations may increase significantly and they may form large aggregations or blooms in some areas. Lastly, let's meet the stunning and colossal barrel jellyfish. You may be quite amazed by the size of this gentle giant. The barrel jellyfish is one of the largest jellyfish species in the UK, with some individuals reaching an astonishing one metre in diameter. Despite their size though, they are harmless to humans. The barrel jellyfish has a distinct umbrella-shaped bell with eight lobes that radiate outward from the centre. It lacks long trailing tentacles like the compass jellyfish and the moon jellyfish and instead has frilly oral arms that hang down from the bell's edge. Despite their large size, the sting of the barrel jellyfish is considered extremely mild and harmless to humans. They have fewer and less potent stinging cells, nematocysts, compared to some other jellyfish species and their sting is unlikely to cause serious discomfort. However, it's always best to avoid touching jellyfish to prevent any potential irritation. Despite their large size, barrel jellyfish primarily feed on small plankton and microscopic organisms. They use their bell-like bodies to create a feeding current, drawing water into their arms, which are equipped with numerous small, hair-like structures called cilia. As water is drawn into the oral arms, the cilia on these arms work together to create a current that moves the water towards the jellyfish's mouth, located in the centre of the bell. Plankton and other small organisms present in the water are captured by the sticky mucus coating the arms. When the conditions are right, these mesmerising creatures can undergo massive blooms, gathering in large groups called smacks. During these seasonal blooms, large numbers of these jellyfish congregate in specific areas. 
These blooms are most commonly observed during the spring and summer months when water temperatures rise. During their blooms, they can consume large quantities of plankton, effectively filtering the water as they drift. The reasons behind these aggregations are still not entirely understood, but they are believed to be influenced by food availability, water conditions and reproductive factors. Mass blooms of jellyfish, including barrel jellyfish, provide scientists and researchers with valuable opportunities to study these creatures' behaviour, distribution and interactions with the marine environment. Studying these blooms contributes to a better understanding of jellyfish ecology and their role in the larger marine ecosystem. Barrel jellyfish are typically spotted in the warmer months, from spring to autumn in coastal waters around the UK, including the Irish Sea and the English Channel. Barrel jellyfish are not exclusive to the UK. They are found in various regions across the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. While barrel jellyfish are often observed near the surface, they are capable of descending to deeper waters. In some cases, they have been found in depths of up to a thousand metres. Their ability to inhabit various water depths allows them to exploit different food sources and adjust to changing environmental conditions. Barrel jellyfish are known to exhibit vertical migration, where they move between different water depths over the course of a day or night. During the day, they often remain in deeper waters, away from the intense sunlight that could damage their delicate tissues. As night falls, they may migrate upwards towards shallower waters to feed on plankton that migrate closer to the surface under cover of darkness. In deeper waters, barrel jellyfish can take advantage of the vertical distribution of planktonic organisms. They may capture prey that migrates vertically, ascending to the surface to feed during the nighttime hours. This behaviour allows the jellyfish to optimise their feeding efficiency and energy expenditure. Deeper waters offer barrel jellyfish some protection from potential predators that may be more active near the surface. By residing in deeper waters during the day, the jellyfish can reduce their vulnerability to visual predators, such as seabirds, that rely on sight to locate prey. Additionally, the sensitivity of barrel jellyfish to light can influence their depth distribution. In deeper waters, where light intensity is lower, the jellyfish can adjust to the reduced light levels without the risk of exposure to harmful levels of sunlight. Barrel jellyfish may inhabit deeper waters during specific life cycle stages. For example, during their early stages as polyps, they can settle on the seafloor at varying depths. As they then develop into juvenile and adult medusae, they may undertake vertical migrations as part of their natural behaviour. While barrel jellyfish are more commonly associated with coastal areas, their ability to inhabit deeper waters highlights their adaptability to various environments within the ocean. These three amazing jellyfish species remind us of the incredible diversity of our oceans and of the diversity of the animals that inhabit them. Thank you so much for listening and if you enjoyed this video, come and say hi on Instagram at discoverwildofficial.